Hey guys, so um, this video was to show you guys how to assemble a stripped upper receiver. Um, so here's a stripped upper receiver, and uh, first we're going to do the forward assist. Um, here's a forward assist. It usually comes pre-assembled like so. Um, and then uh, what you want to do with the receiver is flip it upside down because you're going to have to put the roll pin through here. And you get the spring for the forward assist, and you stick it in like that. And the part in the direction you want to put it in is um, you'll see this little thing. There's a little groove right there. It's gonna be flat here, but then, and then there's like a little it kind of goes in like this right here, and it goes up like this. So it doesn't go the other direction, but it goes in like this. So, um, and then what you want to do is you see that there's a slot. And that's where the roll pin is going to um, go in. Uh, normally, I would have an Allen wrench, so I would, you know, do what the old trick where um, I would stick it in there and then just have the roll pin just replace the Allen wrench. But I don't have one with me because I am at Kenny's house. But we will just go ahead and do it because it's not that hard. Um, so I have the roll pin holder and then the roll pin. And uh, so we're gonna make sure, see how it's like, see that hole, and then see where it's like, you don't want that. So you wanna push it a little bit. You wanna stick it in here. And then you get the hammer. Alright, so it's all in. Uh, I scratched it up a little bit, but it's on their side. You will never see it. So, yeah. So next we will install the uh, dust cover or the trap door. Alright guys, so we're going to put on the uh, dust cover now, and so what you're going to need is the dust cover, and the this thing, the rod, and the spring. So um, so what we're going to need to do is you'll see the spring, or the rod, and then on one end you see a little C-clip on it. That's for uh, when you slide it in like this, it prevents it from slipping through the other side and just coming out. So make sure that side is on the right side. And so go ahead and just place the maybe like so. Like this. And then put the rod halfway through. Uh, this is the part where it's a little tricky. Um, the spring is like this. It will come in the long end and the short end. You want the long end on the right. So you want to take it like this and twist it like this so or have it pointed down and then twist the short end um, back like this and this but gives the tension for the door to stay open so you want to stick it in here and then slide the rod through it all the way through and see how it's um line it up go and see how it's um, short ends up on, the, up on the receiver and the long ends on the dust cover so keep it like so like that and the function check just push the other end and yeah now we are gonna move on to the um, the barrel itself um, we're gonna install a uh, Yankee O machine uh, lightweight um, Spectre length forearm, it's free float. Um, I'm a big fan of Yankee Hill Machine forearms. They're um, good price, uh, good quality, um, and I use them for all my builds. So you're gonna need um, the barrel nut, all right? And then you'll need the I forgot what it's called, lock nut or something, but it's not that. I mean, you'll need it, but yeah. So you'll need a vise for this part, and as, as well as a barrel. Um, you have a barrel right here. It's regular 16 inch, you know, M4, feeding ramps, um, chrome lined, this 1 7 twist. Um, I prefer the 1 7 twist because uh, 
they tend to be better with um, most um, uh, bullets for the 5.56 five, or 2.23. Uh, it works with 55 grain, 62 grain, uh, just accurate with all um, all grains pretty much. So I recommend the 1.7th. There's also the 1.8th and 1.9th, but those tend to be, you know, uh, not good for like maybe the 55 grain or 62 grain, depending on which one it is. But the 1.7th twist really um, is accurate with all um, types and grains and weights and etc. So yeah, we're gonna get the vise over here and I'll show you how to just get, how to get this on. Um, so I put the upper receiver on the vise block now. I take the barrel. On the barrel, you can see a little thing, that thing, see? I'm gonna give me a, a slot right there. So you wanna match up that with the barrel, like so. See how it goes right in? And now, you wanna take the barrel nut and it's the other way and proceed to screw it in like so now this is the tricky part um, you're gonna need the AR wrench and you need to tighten it but I'll take it off the vise and show you there are holes see those holes and you're gonna have to match it up with the hole for the gas tube and the upper receiver. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Um, the barrel is in the way, so you can't really see it. But you know, now you see it. See that hole? You have to tighten it and have it so that the gas tube, the gas tube would go right in here and right into the uh, upper receiver. See how it lines up? Because it lines up with that hole. So you're gonna have to tighten it, but tighten it enough but at the same time have it aligned. Um, I've worked with these Yankee Hill Machine forearms before, and uh, they tend to all wind this, or tighten the same way. But I will go ahead and tighten it, and then show you guys it lined up. So yeah, I tightened it, so now it's all aligned, as you can see. So, that part is done. Let's bring this camera back right down. And now, um, we're going to use this gas, low profile gas block. Um, you see one end has a hole and the other end doesn't. And you'll need a carbine length gas tube. We're using in this case. Um, each barrel is different. Um, this one happens to be carbine length. Uh, gas port tends, uh, happens to be carbine length, or that's what I ordered. And so you'll need a gas or a carbine length gas tube. Uh, depend so really just pay attention to that. You don't want if you get the wrong one, obviously you can't use it. It's not gonna be it's gonna be either too short or too long. So um, you need the gas tube and in this one has the gas tube pin right here. And first uh, you can have you can see one end has nothing and then the other hand end has um, this hole at the bottom and then the hole that goes all the way through so you want to put this end on this side see that hole right there I don't know if you can see it but it's right there and that's the hole that's gonna line up to this bottom hole and then see that pinhole and that's the hole that's gonna line up to that so you line it up like so and then you just put it in I like to use this pin holder it's really convenient and then you put it in with the hammer and all right so uh, we got it in as you can see it goes all the way through to the upper receiver and now I just want to tighten these uh, allen screws iron right bottom you just want to make sure that the uh, gas tube is centered to the barrel and to the upper receiver because you want to make sure that that bottom hole in the uh, gas block is matched up to that see that hole right there that's where the whole um, gases come up from the barrel the gas tube and into the uh, bolt carrier group pushing it back to chamber in the next round so just make sure you do that and you tighten it and then we'll go on to the next part all right so now we're gonna put on screw on the forearm you're gonna need um, these anti-rotating screws that the uh, Yankee machine forearms use and uh, the forearm this is where you put the this thing the uh, barrel nut or yeah 
just screw that on there. This is just a Titan later. Um, yeah. So get that on. Just, just all the way to the rear. I just keep it there. And then you're gonna see these holes on the side. So you wanna line them up with the slots because these screws, anti-rotating screws, are gonna go through these like so, and they're gonna go into these slots that are in the uh, barrel nut or barrel screw. Actually, um, the rounded side is actually supposed to be towards the receiver, and the flat flush side is supposed to be at the front. So you go ahead and screw it. In. So you want to screw it in until pretty much um, you can't see those slots. So you just want to look inside. You can't see it, but basically you want to um, keep going until you can't see. Um, do you have a flashlight? So you will see. Uh, it has to be angled more, higher. So you see um, how it's. You still see the threading and for the barrel nut or the barrel nut. So you want to keep going until. Um, angle more higher. Yeah. You still see a little bit of threading, but you see the slots. So I want to screw it in a little more. One more time. There we go. And see now you don't, you don't see any threading, and you only see the uh, slot. So you want to line up with the slot. Make sure it's um. I'm good. Make sure it's uh everything's even. Line up the slots and then just screw in the anti-rotating screws. And they should go right in. You guys have Phillips side. And then the other side. Alright. Phillips head. You tighten it. And then with this thing, um, it's not that important. It's just, I just hand tighten it. There's the slots on here. You can use to, if you're really like, concerned, you can just use it to tighten it. But I just hand tighten it. And finally, the last and final piece would be the uh, flash hider. In this case, we have this flash hider. I don't know what the, uh, Rainier Arms um, X. XTC model, uh, it's a pretty good compensator. You need the crush washer, you stick it in there like that, and you screw it on. But the trick is, you gotta make sure um, to make sure that it's a compensator, so um, it has to go in a certain way. So um, just make sure that you get it right. You don't want the holes pointing some odd, weird direction or something, so. See, like I just did that, and that is the bottom, and this is the top of the receiver. So, I did it wrong. So, it just kind of, you just gotta just mess around with it, uh, screwing at different points, and try different things. And uh, even try two crush washers if you have two, or spacers if you have any. So, I yeah, just mess around with that, and I'll show you guys with it on. Hey guys, so I uh, finally got it on and uh, aligned, as you can see. Um, the Rainier Arms logo is at the top, and it is nice and uh, straight. So this is the end product. Um, came out uh, pretty nice. Uh, everything costs around 800, 900 bucks, um, which is pretty good. Um, I really recommend you build your own AR because, uh, yeah, the gun shops uh, overcharge, and uh, you save a hundred, at least a hundred, a few hundred bucks. You can really use that uh, money to, uh, you know, buy ammo and shoot and practice shooting it. And so yeah, this is uh, this is it, the end product, and uh, some of my other guns and other AR that I'm working on. But um, yeah, turned out really good. Really happy with it. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, see you guys later.